to go back to the analysis after bishop takes d5, e takes d5, the problem was e6 apparently is a bit of a mistake. So now the engine gives rook takes f8 as the best move. Here's a little tri trick or little little tip. Um, it's, you know, a lot of players think that when they calculate or when they when they solve tactics, when they sharpen their pattern recognition, they have to do it because they take a chess book, they do whatever. But that's like saying that you can only exercise when you're at the gym or something, right? You can exercise at any moment in time. You can exercise in little bursts. Just when you're moving, when you're cooking, you're exercising at times, you know, to uh, to some extent. And so um, with chess, I think it's the same. You have moments like these, for example, where you can test yourself tactically. You can see, oh, the engine has just indicated to me plus four if I play rook takes f8. And so... What I'm going to do now, what you can say to yourself is, well, let me solve this without actually just looking at what the engine tells me to the end. Let me see, do I understand what the point is and I won't move the pieces. So that would be kind of a way to test yourself. And and uh, here, for example, let's see, maybe I'll be able to understand it. I, I still don't, uh, but I'll give it a shot. So after e6, the problem was he went rook e8. And I guess that that made it very much easier. But if I go rook takes f8, I give him two options. If bishop takes f8, I guess I, my first thought is e6, and my threat is e7. He has to deal with that. Maybe he does something like bishop e7. But after bishop e7, maybe I can go bishop takes, queen takes, and then put my queen on e5. He can never move his queen without me being able to push on, push the pawn on. And otherwise, this pawn on d5 falls. If, for example, from that position, he were to put his queen here, we would push the pawn, and after queen here, we would actually be able to take this pawn with check. So that position uh, would be would be completely lost. Let me hide that so so there's no um, there's no engine, there's nothing like that. Uh, so basically, what I'm thinking now is bishop takes takes e6. He cannot play bishop e7 because of takes takes and queen e5 should be winning. I'm gonna take the d5 pawn and then I'm gonna push push home these uh, e6 and d4 pawns. Um, so therefore, what can he do? If he goes after bishop takes e6, if he doesn't block, I'm going to play e7 no matter what, and that's going to cost him a piece. So after rook takes, king takes, uh, what would happen there? I could go queen f3 check, but I see the move queen f7. Uh, so that doesn't look convincing. So it must be uh, still e6, or at least I suspect it's e6. Then I now have this threat of queen f3, because then he no longer has queen f7. So after e6, what can he do? He doesn't really have many squares. He cannot activate his bishop. He could try and kick my bishop out. Remember, my pawn is now on e6. His king is now on uh, on f8. And now he's threatening that he plays this move uh, h6. In that case, maybe I have a move like queen f3 check anyway. Then he goes king to e8 though. And what... What could I do there? Mm, I could go bishop f4, but then he goes queen c6. I'm not so convinced by that. Mm. Aha, I have an idea. What if in that position I go e7 check? He'll have to put his king on e8, and now I ignore my bishop, and I go queen e6. And I'm ignoring my bishop, but I have a huge threat of taking this pawn on g6 with checkmate. And on top of that, I also have the threat of queen g8. So he doesn't have a move like queen c6 or anything like that. So my position at this point is his king is here. My queen is on e6. I have a pawn. My pawn is here on, e, on e7. He has his pawn on h6. The rooks are off the board. And now he takes this guy. Because I had too many threats. Now I take this guy. And now he has to take, because I'm taking him with check, and he has to take. He takes, and now I take this guy. And now he has to go here. And the point is, I can probably just take, take, and that position should be a win. Um, unless somehow I cannot stop his pawn. But I could go king f2, b5. King here, b takes, king here, a3, king here. And I get there in time. Um, and as long as I get there in time, this end game should be winning. 
yeah, it should be winning because I have like a, an extra pawn. And um, yeah, and I think that that, that end game is winning. We're going to double check all of this now in a second. Um, I think that that line wins. Of course, if I wanted to be diligent, I would double check it or triple check it now in my mind. And I would think, you know, my suspicion is the engine is going to show that there's a simpler path or maybe find some mistake in, in what I what I was uh, in my calculations there. But for the sake of illustration, let's take a look uh, now and see. Let's double check our analysis. So my theory is that the reason why rook takes is very strong here is because if bishop takes e6, this pawn just rolls up the board and he cannot block it with bishop e7 because I take take and queen e5. And if on the other hand he goes king takes, then my theory is I push anyway. And if he harasses with h6, I push anyway. He has to go to e8, otherwise I'll make a queen. And I go this very nice move, queen e6. He now takes, I take. He has to take my pawn, otherwise I make a queen. I take here. And now he plays some move like king d6. This is where I think maybe the engine will just say, look, don't, don't be a fool. Just keep the queens on the board and start hoovering up some pawns with checks. And that's a simple win. But what I'm curious about is that endgame. Can I force? Because if you can force a pawn endgame, a king and pawn endgame, they're usually very uh, sort of uh, binary, right? They're like win or loss, win or loss. Um, okay, sometimes draw. I don't know what I'm saying. But anyway, let's, let's, check, let's check this out. Let's see if that endgame is, is actually winning or not. So let's now turn on the engine. Hopefully you guys have understood my point, which is you have this uh, way of just creating your own tactical puzzles. Um, and I think that, that it's very interesting because they're they're personal, because they're, they were a part of your game. So for example, rook takes, king takes, e6. First of all, I had said if bishop takes e6, and the point is if bishop e7, you take here, take here, and queen e5. So you can see that the engine agrees that this is the, this is the solution to this um, part of the puzzle. And if king takes also e6, uh, so far correct, and here I didn't consider a move like king e8, but it's kind of similar because of this queen f3 idea where this pawn is falling. And if you go uh, the move h6 here, I guess, yeah, so the first mistake is maybe I should have included something like this. I think it's a little bit maybe silly to, to look at this line too much because um, white has so many threats and black cannot untangle because if he goes here, queen f7 is made. And if you go g5 here, I'll put my bishop here. And when you move your queen to attack my pawn, I'll just, worst comes to worst, just grab this pawn. So that's a kind of a straightforward line. For me, the more interesting line was what happens if h6. And you can see that the engine says, don't be crazy, just give a check here. And after king e8, put your bishop back. And if you, let's say, start to defend here, engine finds other solutions like bishop takes, takes, queen f7 is the point, and then the pawn pushes forward. If you go here, I queen with uh, check. If you go here, I also queen. So it's it's game over. But I'm curious to see what did the engine think of my convoluted analysis here. Instead of queen f3, I was proposing the move e7. Turns out that I am a bit foolish with this line because I missed one very important detail. Notice in this position, the engine says, that after h takes g5, it's currently giving plus 1.3. Let's see if the analysis was correct uh, of this particular variation. We take everything, we go here. And I was thinking that this position here uh, would win. Embarrassingly, <laughs> embarrassingly, not only does it not win, but in fact, it actually loses. And I'll tell you the reason why is I had a bit of a hallucination. I thought I still had the pawn on e5 in this variation, and I completely forgot that in fact no you don't have the you don't have the pawn twice so huge mistake uh huge mistake by me and a bit humbling to do that live on stream but what can you do it happens uh to make such a huge mistake um so you can see that uh i need to do some more tactics and calculation work right uh but the point is you have these ways of testing yourself and in my view they're very effective I don't do them as often as often as I feel like I should. I, I don't work as much on my own chess um, as I feel like I should. But I think it's a very nice, uh, nice way 
to add some um, add some puzzles to your own routine, right? In, in, without having to pull out, you know, a, a chess book. So it turns out here it was a win for a different reason. Um, if h6, don't go crazy like I would have with e7, because after king e8, it turns out that this position here uh, takes, 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 takes. It's only a little bit better for white. Um, well, I mean, okay, it makes sense that it's a little bit better for white. White is up a pawn, um, but there's a lot of work to be done. And the other option, and in fact, after bishop takes d4, intermezzo, which I completely missed, the point is now there is no edge for white because black just sort of used the intermezzo and the position of the king on g1 to just scoop up an extra pawn. So in the end, some kind of position like this is just going to be level pawns and it's just going to be a draw. But the solution was very nice, e6, and if h6, you just go queen f3 check, and if king e8, you just drop the bishop back, and if you try to defend this guy, then bishop takes h6, and if you don't defend this guy, let's say you go here, I guess we can already take this pawn, you can see it's already plus 4, or you can still play bishop takes h6 because of this cute little tactical motif. So I think that's also very interesting, the way that you pick up different tactical motifs just by working on little puzzles that could have arisen in your game. Whereas the, the sort of the lazy, the lazy approach that we've all been there and done that is to just say, where did I go wrong after your game? And you're like, oh, the computer said plus four if I take on f8, but I didn't take on f8 and my opponent is so lucky and I hate his guts and chess is unfair. And a lot of people do that, right? Uh, but they miss the opportunity to, um, you know, to to pick up pick up some things and to test themselves and to work on their own calculations. So 